Hello everyone, welcome to Edureka YouTube channel. My name is Saurabh and today I'm going to discuss about the top 10 DevOps tools that you should learn if you're looking to make a career in DevOps. And we're going to talk about the top 10 DevOps tools. So there's an order in which we have created this list. First, we're going to talk about the version control tools. Then we're going to talk about the continuous integration tools. Then comes the continuous testing. Then comes configuration management and finally continuous monitoring. So let's begin. So we're going to start with the version control tool that is Git. So Git is basically an open source decentralized source code management tool. It is highly scalable and supports nonlinear development. It is pretty reliable as every contributor has his local repo as well. So that is why it is decentralized. There are a lot of companies that use Git. Few of those companies are Microsoft, Amazon, LinkedIn, Accenture, Facebook, and Yahoo. When you go to Google Trends and compare Git with Subversion, Apache Subversion, which is nothing but a centralized version control tool, you'll see that Git is way ahead of Subversion. Let's talk about Jenkins, which is a continuous integration tool, and it is one of my favorite tools. A continuous integration tool with great community support. It is an open source tool. It has well over 2,000 plugins for various development, testing, and deployment technologies. It is built with Java, and hence it is portable to all major platforms. There are a lot of companies that use Jenkins. Few of those are Pentaho, OpenStack, AngularJS, Capgemini, and LinkedIn. Now, when I compare Jenkins with Travis, Bamboo, and BuildBot, which are, again, continuous integration tools, Jenkins is way ahead. Selenium is a continuous testing tool and it provides a suite of software tools to automate web browsers. It is an open source tool and mainly used for functional testing and regression testing. It supports different programming languages, so you can write codes in Java, Python, C Sharp, PHP, Ruby, Perl, JavaScript. It is pretty portable as well, so it works on various operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, etc. etc. There are a lot of companies that use Selenium, for example, Google, Salesforce, IBM, JP Morgan, Cognizant, and Fidelity. When you compare Selenium with other testing tools such as APM and Test Studio, you see that Selenium is way ahead of the other tools. Docker is basically a containerization platform. What it does is it is basically a replacement to virtual machines. It is a lightweight alternative to virtual machines. And it completely removes the problem where the code works in the developer's laptop but does not work in the test or the prod environment. So it provides a consistent computing environment throughout the software delivery lifecycle. So what you can do with Docker is you can write your code in an easy to write Docker file create an image out of that, upload that onto the shared repository, and different teams can pull that image and create as many containers as they want. So there are a lot of companies that use Docker. For example, Uber, New Relic, PayPal, eBay, New York Times, and Oxford University Press. Now, when I compare Docker with Vagrant, Docker is way ahead. Right? You can see that from the graph as well. Docker is here, 97, and Vagrant is somewhere at 11. When I talk about Puppet, so Puppet is basically a configuration management tool. It is used for deploying, configuring, and managing servers. It is one of the most famous tools out there for configuration management and is there since 2005 and has the major market share. It has a master-slave architecture and is an open source tool with a long commercial record. There are a lot of companies that use Puppet, Cisco, JP Morgan, Chase & Co, Raytheon, Teradata. So there are a lot of companies that use Puppet and it is currently the most famous and the most mature configuration management tool. When I compare it with Chef, you can see that Chef is a bit ahead of Puppet. It is because Puppet is there since 2005 and Chef is relatively new, but it doesn't mean that Puppet is not used in the market. It has a major market share, even more than Chef. So Chef is again a configuration management tool. It supports multiple platforms like AIX, uh, CentOS, FreeBSD, and can be integrated with cloud-based platforms. It is an open source tool with active, smart, and fast-growing community support. A lot of companies use Chef, for example, Mozilla, Expedia, Facebook, Walt Disney, HP, and Rackspace. And this is the same Google Trend graph that you can see it in the slides right now. Ansible is again one configuration management tool. It is relatively new and it supports push configuration, which means that the server pushes the configuration onto the nodes. The nodes won't pull the server for configurations and then pull it. So it supports push configuration where the server pushes the configuration to the node. It has a master slave architecture and it is completely agentless, which means that you don't need to install anything on your agents. It uses simple syntax, which is written in YAML. It is very easy to set up and very easy to use. And that is why it is the most trending configuration management tool right now. And you can see that it is competing with Puppet and Chef, which are there in the market for quite a long time, right? And when you see that it is somewhere close to Chef from the graph itself, and it's pretty trending and giants like NASA have adopted Ansible. So you can definitely watch out for this tool. And then this year, it will definitely acquire a huge market. Let's talk about Splunk. So Splunk is basically used to store, search, analyze, and visualize the machine-generated data. It can ingest any type of data file. It can create knowledge objects for operational intelligence. It monitors business matrix as well. A lot of companies use Splunk, Cisco, Facebook, IBM, Bosch, Motorola, Domino's are a few of those. 
And when I compare Splunk with ELK and Nagios, although Nagios is entirely used for continuous monitoring, whereas ELK and Splunk have many other uses as well. Nagios is entirely dedicated to continuous monitoring, but still, if you compare the three tools, you can see that Splunk is a clear winner. When I talk about ELK, so ELK is basically a powerful collection of three open source tools, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kimana. Logstash is nothing but a data collection pipeline. It is the first component of ELK stack which collects data inputs and feeds it to the Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a NoSQL database which is based on Lucent search engine and is built with RESTful API. It is a highly flexible and distributed search and analytics engine. Kibana is basically for data visualization. There are a lot of companies that use ELK. For example, Netflix, OpenStack, Stack Overflow, Accenture, and LinkedIn. And this is the same Google trend graph that I was talking about. Let's talk about Nagios. So Nagios is basically a continuous monitoring tool. It monitors and troubleshoots over performance issues. It allows us to plan for infrastructure upgrades before outdated system cause failures. It can be used to automatically fix problems when they are detected. Companies using Nagios are Comcast, Yahoo, Sony, MTV, Toshiba, Simmons, etc., etc. Now you can see the Google Trend Graph in the slides as well. By this, we come to the end of our list. Now, if you're looking for structured online training on DevOps, you can go to this particular link and you can find all the relevant details here and you can go ahead and click on Enroll Now and you can go ahead and take up the course. Now, if you have any further queries with respect to the course, you can go ahead and mention that in the comment section. We'll reply you ASAP. Now, all the tools that I've discussed, there are separate tutorial videos on YouTube that you can go ahead and have a look. Apart from that, there are blogs as well, and I'll be leaving the link in the description box below, so you can go ahead and check it out. Thank you, and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!